Tom Izzo over John Beeland. I'm telling you, as a coach, that makes you sick all day if you're John Beeline. You have to have this game. For Tom Izzo, he just wants to see his team uh, keep playing well. They were terrific on the road against Nebraska. Absolutely terrific. And he wants to see that continue. Kind of strange that they played just 10 days ago. And here they are again with a rematch. Michigan State, as you mentioned, they won five in a row. Outstanding officiating crew. Gene Steratore, Ted Valentine, and John Gaffney here tonight. Tom Izzo's team, both teams 14 and 9, but the Spartans are 6 and 4 in the league. The Wolverines just 4 and 6 in the league. And looking for a win to try to resuscitate their fading postseason hopes. You know, opposite. Last time they played, Michigan was coming off drubbing Indiana by 30. Michigan State had lost three in a row. Now you turn that around, Michigan has lost a couple in a row. Yeah. Michigan State has won and thinks they're playing as well as they played all season. And after tonight for Michigan, five of their last regular season games are on the road, and the other two home games are against Wisconsin and Maryland. Not going to be easy for Michigan. Floater by Tom Tom Nairn won't drop. Well, that's already a start, getting a defensive rebound. They couldn't rebound at all against Ohio State. 42-24, to 24. Ohio State here last time dominated Michigan. Derek Walton Jr. has been carrying Michigan offensively in recent games. Who needs to step up and help him out? Zach Irvin didn't make a bucket. Yeah. This kid, too. Abdur Rockman on the nice feed from Mo Wagner. Yeah, I felt in the first game, to your point about Walton. Walton was the only guy that played with urgency and really competed in the game. Everybody else was just out to play basketball. And Miles Bridges called for an early offensive foul. Tom Izzo not sure that he likes that call. They need to have Bridges in the game as much as they can. Tom Izzo is sure he doesn't like that call. <laughs> but that was a terrific play by Wagner. Wagner, they're going to make guys throw it to Nick Ward on the move. They're not going to let Nick Ward just settle in the post. Ward and Wagner battling, so Ward will have to step out because Wagner can shoot from outside. He can also drive it and lay it in with a left hand. Every game, every game from the middle, Wagner does that to some center. Usually he dunks. He's had some highlight reels dunk coming down the lane. But what he has in the mobility over Ward at one end, he'll give up in strength trying to guard Ward at the other end. And right? Dan, you've seen it, man. You, Ward is a guy that just wants to go down on a block and whoop up on folks. Yeah. He's not one of those guys. He's playing out here a little bit, but... That'll change pretty quick. Shot clock running down on the Spartans. Nairn with the drive and the kick. Bridges gets it off in time, but it's an air ball and it belongs to Michigan. John Beeline closing in on 500 wins at the Division I level. Of course, was a coach at D2 before that, over 700 wins overall. And, and he's very honest about his team situation. They got to play tough. They got to get loose balls. They got to be junkyard dogs tonight. And that's not who they have been all year, Dan. They have been a finesse team. Maverick Morgan, Illinois, called them a blue collar team. Walton. Yes. I like everything about it, Dan. He is playing like a senior should play. 23 and a half over his last three games. It's stretch time. You're supposed to play like that, and that's where Irvin has to play. That's how Irvin has to play. Ward inside. Nothing doing there, and back come the Wolverines off to a great start tonight. Wilson lost it. Bridges is off to the races. And will finish to put the Spartans on the board. Boy, Wilson had a wide open look and just went up and lost it. Problem with that is now it's in your brain a little bit. So I'm telling you, if he makes the next shot, and he's pretty mentally tough because it stays with you for one more shot. Is it going to slip out of my hand or am I all right? Walton trying to move people around. Shot clock inside 10. Wagner for three. 41% from beyond the arc on the season for Mo Wagner. Dan, that was a great play by Derek Walton. He hung on to the ball just a split second longer to make the help come off of Wagner, and he found him on time. Already tonight of the Big Ten, Maryland has lost at Penn State. Tough to predict what's going to happen in this league this year. Langford into Ward. Shot clock at one. Got it off and put it home. Oh, that's a great play by Ward and a bad play by Wagner. The ball on the left block. Ward is going to turn to the baseline 90% of the time. Wagner let him do it, and Ward just won't miss that. 
Speaking of not missing, Michigan hasn't missed yet. Four for four from the field. Wagner in a whole lot of traffic and in a whole lot of trouble as he turns it over. And Ward will beat the defense down the court. Boy, two live ball turnovers, two dunks at the other end. And Tom Izzo calls those turnovers for touchdowns. You know, Michigan State had been losing the points off turnover battle because they weren't getting turnovers for touchdowns. First four, they got. And Michigan, not a team that turns it over much at all. Just nine and a half turnovers per game, one of the best marks in the nation. Walton forces it up from the elbow around and out. And that's where Michigan gets a little stuck. And Michigan State did a good job of guarding their own. Walton just taking it one on five, no good. Ward, how about the big fella going coast to coast? John Beeline's got to make a substitution here. He is hostile at Wagner. I know Wagner started well. He turned it over, and then Ward whipped everybody down the floor, and nobody stopped the basketball. 6-0 run, Michigan State. We've got about four and a half minutes without a whistle in this game. Had one early. Irvin pulls up, short on the jumper. He is really scuffling. Battled the flu last week, but just two for 18 in his last two games. Bridges. Yeah, good call. Wilson called for the moving screen. It'll be Michigan State ball. When do we come back? All Wolverines early, but Sparty's back in it. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by CenturyLink. Your link to what's next. And in part by the All-In Burger from Applebee's. that re-energized his motivation in this rivalry, dedicating this game to his dad and Raymond and Cynthia Bridges both here tonight to watch their son play, Dan. All right, Molly, thank you. Good stuff. Bridges with the ball. Outstanding talent. One of the top freshmen in the country. Missed some time with an ankle sprain in December, but since he's gotten healthy, Dan, getting better and better. All right, 33 in a game that we did against Purdue and a loss to Purdue. He was just dominant. Alvin Ellis with the ball for Michigan State was sick earlier today, did not attend shoot-around, had some flu, but is in the lineup. They're hoping for a few minutes for him. Made a nice play there, but the shot clock will run out on Michigan State again. I'd almost bet that Michigan hasn't forced two shot clock violations all year. And they've done it in the first five and a half minutes because they've had active hands on the basketball, and for the most part, other than in transition, they've kept the ball in front of them. Mark Donnell into the game for Michigan in place of Mo Wagner. The drive by Irvin and the kick. Irvin gets it back, rises up for a three. You were nodding your head when the ball's in the air. You could tell it was well, going in. Because of how he released it, nobody yeah. back. He released the first one, it popped out of his hands. That one he shot. It's a big difference between the ball just popping out and you directing it with the big three. Wilson. Misses the three and a good block out by Kenny Goins. Kenny Goins is really important to this team. Look at Michigan State running. How about that? <laughs> how, how many players that size, 6'7", 230, can make that play? One. Yeah. <laughs> that kid. He's got a future, doesn't he? He's a freak yeah. athlete. Yeah. You know, he, he, you mentioned him getting better. You know, he's fresh. And sometimes, you know, missing games as long as it doesn't affect your play and affect your movement can keep you fresh at the end of the year. And yeah. it has for him. Nice feed from Walton into the corner, and Abdur Rockman knocks down the three, and everybody who follows Michigan knows they can get hot from beyond the arc. Yeah, they can get real hot. They were awful shooting the basketball against Michigan State a couple days ago, at nine days ago. Look at this. Bridge is showing you the outside game. Dan, he spun in transition, made a bucket over somebody, then he just steps out as easy as you want. I don't know what else you want yeah. from a player. Uh, John Beeline said before the game, we just got to make it hard on him. Sometimes he said, the guy's just so good, you just kind of tip your cap, and he harkened back to his West Virginia days against Carmelo Anthony in his one year at Syracuse. He said, sometimes the great players, you do everything right, and they can still hurt you. Abdur Rockman hurting Michigan State right now. Abdur Rockman was defended really well. Got away with a little push. He's important. You asked me. You asked me who should step up. Walton has nobody else. It's it's absolutely Irvin and Abdul Rahman. Yep. 
Michigan four for five from three-point range. They take them, and when they're going well, they make them. It's a real barometer for them in wins and losses. They took 35 in their last game, right? Yeah, 26 yeah. against Michigan yeah. State. 35 against Ohio State. Drive, yeah. and another shot clock violation. Third. Timeout on the floor. Tom Izzo not happy. They're really active with their hands. Like that shuts off passing lanes and has forced Michigan State to back up a little bit. The second thing is they're doing a good job of keeping their own man in front of them. If you give an angle and Michigan State's able to drive, they penetrate and kick. The last thing happens under here. The big guys are doing a great job of coming over and playing defense on any driver. They're squaring their shoulders to the driver. It's been fantastic. Three shot clock violations in the first eight minutes. Three of the five turnovers that Michigan State has committed. And you get a look here with the shot clock running down. This is the last possession, the one right before the timeout. And they just don't get it off in time. Winston realized it, but could not get the shot off in time. And Tom Izzo livid right now. This is a good offensive team, Michigan State, when they get their shots off. In Big Ten games, they're leading the conference in field goal percentage, but you can't score if you don't get a shot off. No, and I'm telling you, Michigan has not been active defensively until this game. They have shown better hands. They have shown better help from the post than I have seen all year. But that loss, that home loss in their last game to Ohio State, that kind of put Michigan into desperation territory, Absolutely, right? Dan. Yeah. You, you, if you're not desperate after that, and you're yeah. playing your rival, you can't help. You shouldn't be in Division yeah. One basketball. They're only four and six in the Big Ten. They're listed by Joe Lenardi as one of the next four out. Lenardi's got Michigan State as an eight seed right now. Loose ball goes the, to the Spartans. Big D, I'm telling you, Michigan never, ever gets a loose ball against Michigan State. Winston hopping mad after yet another turnover, the sixth committed by the Spartans in less than nine minutes of play. Got an NBA doubleheader coming your way tomorrow night. Starts at Madison Square Garden as the Knicks host the Clippers and then the second game. The Bulls take it on the Warriors. The coverage begins at 7 with the NBA countdown charged by Mountain Dew. Four teams, only one that's not dysfunctional, the Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Bulls are a mess. Knicks are a mess. Nice. Count it and a foul. Donnell on the feed from Walton. I'm telling you, when you're a senior, you're supposed to do what those two guys just did. Derek Walton has upped his level of play, Dan, and this is an unbelievable pass. You turn your head on the ball like Goins did, and you're going to get beat, and Mark Donnell finished. You know, Mark Donnell had some big games last year, had 25 at Illinois. He's a guy that can really play in a variety of ways and just hasn't gotten going this year. But when you're a senior at the end, you've got to go. It's time to go. Don't worry about anything. Aaron Harris into the game, back into the game for Michigan State. Matt McQuaid getting some words from his coach as he takes a seat on the bench. And Donnell at the line looking to complete the three-point play, which he will. Outstanding free throw shooting team. Donnell's going to sit and now get our first look of the night at a seven-foot freshman, John Teske. All right. I'm not going to criticize Coach Bela. He's won a ton of games, but I don't understand taking Donnell out. You need somebody in this position that's going to play and score and play well. Donnell just gets a bucket. You're trying to get a guy some confidence, and you take him out. Let's see how it goes. Coach Beeline talked about the size of Teske against Ward before the game. Ward had some success against Michigan 10 days ago. Nice drive and a finish by Aaron Harris. Yeah, he just smashed Abdul Rahman. He just took him into the lane and just abused him. You cannot let Aaron Harris play in the middle of the floor. Make him play on the sides and you're in business. Xavier Simpson into the point now for Walton for Michigan. They'll play through Irvin with Walton out of the game. Irvin stumbles. Simpson comes up with a loose ball. And gets to the rim. You see the bench, Michigan's bench. They love Xavier Simpson. They, the whole team, loves this guy. He's been a competitor. The year has really not gone well for him. He's Mr. Basketball out of Ohio. Big score, big reputation. He's really struggled. But you could tell by the way that bench reacted two things. Number one. This is an important game to Michigan. Number two, they really like this kid. He's a guy who spells Walton, 8, 10 minutes a game. This is the free throw. Eight-point lead to Michigan nearing the midway point of the first half here in Ann Arbor.
Cassius Winston, part of this four-man freshman class for Michigan State, all ranked in the top 40 coming in preseason. Here's how it looks right now with the Big Ten. Wisconsin on top at 9-1. and one. We mentioned earlier, Maryland lost at Penn State earlier tonight, so they're now with Purdue at 8-3. Northwestern 7-3. Then you got Michigan State sitting fifth in the conference, and as we mentioned, Joe Lenardi's got him as, as an eight seed right now. Brutally tough schedule, a ton of travel at the beginning of the year. Injuries to this Michigan State team as well. But they have a habit of getting better in February and March, don't they? Yeah, and they have a habit of guys like Elvin Ellis, the third, coming on, and he has terrific game, 15 points against Nebraska at Nebraska. Made all five of his shots, and you see right there, you don't need a shooter like that. You just show <laughs> up and right. shoot, man. <laughs> Abdur Rockman can't turn the corner on Ward. Good help. Simpson with a burst of speed, but misses the layup. Ellis in some traffic. Extra look into the corner. Harris couldn't get a shot off. Now he can, and he finishes off the glass. Man, Irvin was there. He left because he thought it was going to be a kick out to Bridges, which left Simpson too small to handle Aaron Harris. Hey, how about one team shooting 69%, the other at 75? You know, you said it's a beautiful game and the ball goes in. Yeah. Duncan Robinson, three-point shooter with the ball in the corner for Michigan. Boy, was that good by Bridges. He came out with his hands up and kept him active. It's a deep one for Abdur Rockman out there and Ward for the rebound. Winston that slips. That's what the crowd wants. Play still live, and finally a held ball will turn it back over to Michigan. Possession arrow favoring the Wolverines, and mass substitutions both ways. Generally, when you fall down and skid around and move your feet, it's usually called a trap. Walton back into the game. Wagner back into the game. Wilson back into the game for Michigan. Tum Tum Nairn, Joshua Langford have returned for Michigan State. I think it's time to go back to Wagner in the middle of the floor against Nick, Nick Ward and make him play a little bit. There he is. Simpson finds Wagner and a foul. Good call, Coach. Yeah, you got to do that. Nick Ward has shown he couldn't really guard Wagner, and Ward's been out there, and Wagner's fresh. But you, Dan, this is something I did not understand as a player, and whenever I say this on TV, people kill me for it. But you have to make that layup if you're Wagner. You know, most people say, ah, oh, you got fouled. No, you have to. That's an easy three-point play. And so many times you only get one point out of it. You have to make that. Wagner, as you can see from the numbers, a much bigger part of the Michigan puzzle this year than he was last year as a freshman. And there's a, a point lost three to one. at the line. Yep. Three to one at best. At best. That's Charles Matthews. He transferred from Kentucky doing some coaching. <laughs> Everybody's coaching a yeah. game like this. He's going to be a good player. Yeah. He's going to be a real. I yeah. watch him in practice. He is athletic. If they had him right now, it'd be a different team. Simpson nearly came up with a steal. But even a thing like active hands, deflections, it all kind of falls under the heading of junkyard dog that John Beeline wants to see, right? And you know what? They had none of that. I'm telling you, Dan, they had none of that against Michigan State nine days ago. They had absolutely none of that against Ohio State. They came out to play a mid-year bad NBA game. They have beaten the likes of Indiana, SMU, Marquette, but they need some more W's, and they need W's over quality teams. No. Harris knocked away. Walton, shovel pass, Robinson. Walton for three. Man, Walton is balling. You know that senior year urgency maybe, he, right? He's the only guy. I'm yep. telling you, Dan, he's the only guy against Michigan State that played with any kind of urgency, any kind of heart. Everybody's playing tonight. Yep. Has been healthy this year. Of course, has battled some injuries the last couple of years, but... He is finishing off his collegiate career in style. Double-double against Ohio State, 25-10. and 10. He's been their leading rebounder in three of their last four games. Simpson for three! <laughs> Michigan six for eight from three-point range.
Look at the hands. Wagner with a steal. He's got help. Doesn't need it. Tom Izzo needs a timeout. What a start for the Wolverines here tonight. Three-point range, shooting 71%. Michigan State shooting 69%, but turnovers have been a killer. They've committed 10 turnovers already in this game. And it's the first time Michigan, as we've said, has really come out after somebody. Doubled with great hands. Look at Walton. Nobody rebounds at the point guard position as good as Derek Walton, or as well as Derek Walton. He said in three of his last four games, he's had 9, 10, and 11 rebounds. And look out. It may be one of those nights for Michigan from beyond the arc. Oh, my. He just lifted up. He measured, looked, lifted, drilled it. There's seven for nine from beyond the arc. And on a 12-0 run, Aaron Harris will try to quiet the crowd. Huge shot right there. Wasn't a great shot. Mo Wagner had come over and really done a nice job getting Bridges to kick it out, but what a big-time shot by Aaron Harris. Simpson and Walton out there together in the backcourt for Michigan. Walton the drive, little fake, nice kick, still got five to shoot. Wilson from the baseline. Simpson the assist. Simpson made a great play. He passed fake, didn't panic, passed fake, which opened the lane and hit D.J. Wilson. Here's Wagner again. Good help by Wagner. Goins, the jumper rattles out. What an offensive rebound, though, by Harris. Hey, Harris came right around and over Derek Walton. Walton didn't realize that Harris was there. He thought he had a clean rebound. Harris keeping him in the game, Dan. First offensive rebound, Coach, of the that? game for either team almost 15 minutes in. Wagner behind the back, takes a bump, left hand! Woo-hoo! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Pretty good skill set there for the 6'10 sophomore. Bridges for three. Look at, it. Look at Simpson. Man, that, see, that's so great because the kid hasn't played nearly as much. He's been disappointed, but he's worked like crazy. And so he's ready when he got shamed. Oh! Wilson, Duncan, and Woofen, and just got teed up oh, for him. Oh, you can't give him a tee right there. Come on. Who makes, you know who makes these rules? Guys that never played. I don't care if he wolf. Were you a woofer? Absolutely. I still am. <laughs> 54 years old. You give me the pickup game, I'm talking. Why not? Are you? You still play a lot of hoops. No, not, huh? I get woofed at. Well, I get woofed at. I'm the guy who gets posterized and woofed on. <laughs> I can't stop talking, which is no surprise. Terrible call. Let's go to Molly. Dan, uh, John Beeline probably not happy about that. In the last time out, he was Ball focusing man. all on defense, telling his players, do not celebrate. If you make a shot, get back on 
transition on defense. He is not happy right now with Wilson on that. He just told his players not to do that. Well, he can be unhappy, and Molly's right. That is Coach Beeline's way of going about it. But I got to tell you, Michigan has been one of the dullest teams in the country, Dan and Molly. They don't have, they rarely, if ever, show excitement. So watching this team and seeing that, it's good to see. This is college basketball. Another downside, though, the technical counts yeah, as a that's personal. A it's his second, and that, that whooping's going to send him to the bench probably for the next four and a half But minutes. here's what I always liked about Steve Wellmer. Remember Steve Wellmer, the yeah. whale official? He would stop the game and tell you, look, next time I'm calling it. It's a rivalry game. Robinson in for Wilson. Michigan State's won five in a row in the rivalry. What a move by Miles Bridges. Great move. Tom Izzo is in the Hall of Fame because he read things off a bathroom wall. I mean, he understood, look, we're going to get Bridges the ball in the block, and there's nobody in this building going to handle it. That's a tough cover for Robinson. Walt made a traffic, somehow got the shot off, came up with a loose ball, and is fouled. Great effort by Derek Walton. Look at Moe. Moe's over there helping his teammate out. Moe's falling down, going back to the huddle. Moe's also <laughs> going behind the back a little dirt. Basketball landscape, and there's really no room for it. You want to bump each other fine, but I don't like any of that. So we've had some whooping. We've had some tripping. It's a, it's a rivalry yes. game, and it's intenser tonight. Let's check in with Molly. But you know what, Dan? John Beeline staying very focused. Didn't even mention it to his players during that timeout. He told them to just keep their composure, keep going forward. He doesn't want them to think about that last play and that trip. All right, Molly, thank you. So Derek Walton, Jr., at the line. We'll shoot the two technical free throws as Michigan tries to add to their lead. Michigan in desperate need of a victory. We mentioned they've lost two in a row at Michigan State, then a home loss to Ohio State and going down the stretch. After this one, five of their last seven are on the road. The home games are against Wisconsin and Purdue. you got to figure at the least, and they probably have to win, what, six of the eight games, including tonight, to, to be in decent shape? I would think, and they don't have a road win all year. Right. And you know when you get in front of that committee and they're looking at everything, hey, Road wins, neutral site wins. They have a neutral site, a couple of them, but nothing on the road. Dead road game. Bridges on Robinson, handoff to Walt. 16-point lead for the Wolverines. Got out of the gate fast, and they haven't really slowed down. Well, it's a big-time week in the college basketball landscape. And in fact, it is rivalry week. And a couple of great games coming your way on Thursday night. You'll be in the studio watching these games. Carolina and Duke from Cameron at 8 Eastern. Then Oregon and UCLA in a rematch of a great game earlier this year, won by the Bruins. They are both sonic blockbusters, and they're streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. I, I don't think we've seen a better performance all year than Oregon, I agree Arizona. I agree with you. It was. It, it got to the point where Sean Miller was just kind of laughing. Yeah. Like, nothing you can do. Yeah. They won by 27, and that flattered Arizona. They were up. Oregon was up 37 at one point in that game. Ellis just gets it off before the shot clock. Now Michigan is clogging the lane, getting back to shooters. Well, you got to respect that shot. It, it's on every scouting report. Make Robinson put it on the deck. No doubt. And you always have your hands up when he has the ball looking at the rim. Don't put your hands down. There Backdoor you go. cut and a lay-in for Robinson. Well, the reason I said there you go is because that is a Michigan staple. I hit the wing, and I either flare or I straight cut. If you don't jump to the basketball defensively, they get you. Highest scoring first half of the season for Michigan. They got 2.22 to go. Three-pointer for Tum Tum Nairn not there. And down with a rebound, Wagner. Well, that's the last thing Tom Izzo wanted. He's going nuts with Nairn on the sideline. Matt McQuaid getting ready to check back in. Screen by Wagner. Shot clock at seven. Walton wants another screen. Tough jumper. Got it. When you're a senior and you're just focused on winning and playing hard, tough jumpers go in. When you're thinking of anything else, they don't. It's getting noisy here at Chrysler. 
Tough pass inside. Goins will get it to go. Man, that was a heck of a pass because there was no room there, and Wagner just turned his head, and the ball went right by him. Good finish, Goins. How about Goins? Got a knee brace on from an old injury. Wearing a mask, suffered a broken nose in the Purdue game. Tough driving layup. Muhammad Ali Abdur Rahman. What do you like better from a Michigan perspective, the offense or the defense? Oh, it's not even close. I, I like the defense. If you're going to ask me totally, I like the energy and the toughness they're playing with. They're playing exactly what John Beeline told you. Junkyard dog mentality against a team that's known for it. Shot clock running down again. It's at one. That's air ball. Yep. Yeah. That's four. Unbelievable. And that look right there says, I can't believe it. Tom Izzo's got, are you kidding me, four shot clock violations in one half. This is a little bit earlier, and I, I don't blame Izzo. Ward doing what he did, tripping a guy going to the bench, inexcusable. And Tom Izzo's not a guy that just lets those things go. Dan, I, look, I watch every Michigan game. I've never seen them play with this kind of energy, and I'm talking about Dan in three years. I mean, they ever since that good run of the championship game and then the final eight the next year, they've not played with this kind. They certainly didn't have it against Ohio State Ooh. during the week. Wagner with a tough finish. Talk about finishing through contact, huh? That's when you're just playing hard. You make your best jump. You make your best jump. You can take the contact. You can take it in your face. You can take it on your shoulder. When you fall, you can't. When you make your best jump, you can. Kids having a heck of a night. You know, if you're a Michigan fan, you're probably saying, man, isn't this great? And you're also probably saying, boy, where's this been? Yeah, honest right? to goodness. Uh, uh, this was nowhere to be seen this entire year and nowhere to be seen the first Michigan State Michigan game Michigan is shooting 74 percent 20 for 27 another turnover stepped out of bounds and it was because of Zach Irvin Dan Zach Irvin went on the block with Bridges and just battled and started screaming and he couldn't get the ball into Bridges turnover timeout 4.9 to go What a first half for Michigan. They're playing hard, as hard as you say you've ever seen this group play, and they're knocking down their threes. When you have those two things together, they're going to be a good team. Dan, one goes with the other. I, I, I don't care what you say. You play really hard to win, shots start going in. It just does. Walton. Good if it goes, and it does! Wouldn't want to be in that locker room in the next few minutes, I'll tell you that much. But what a first half for Michigan. They talked in the overtime. This is going to be very close, but it That's is good. Up. That's good. Go ahead or not. East Coast, West Coast. But which is the best coast? In the East, one of sports' greatest rivalries. But then there's the edge of your seat, West Coast. You know what? Don't worry. You don't have to choose. We're going coast to coast, baby. Cause we gon' blow your own mind. What a night it's going to be on Thursday night. A phenomenal doubleheader. North Carolina at Duke and then Oregon at UCLA on ESPN. I'm lucky enough to be at Cameron. Molly's going to be at Polly. Molly at Polly. You're going to be in the studio. We're all going to watch some great basketball on Thursday. Oh, it's going to be a tremendous night. And in the Big Ten, Indiana, Purdue. Dick Vitale will be there with Dave O'Brien. It's just a terrific night. How about this? The last 96 times that Carolina and Duke have met, They've split them, 48 apiece, and not only that, this is the crazier part of it, 
they've scored the exact same number of points in, in those 96 games. That's insane, Dan. I think this is where the phrase, something's got to give, comes from. Uh, Duke playing better, in, in your opinion? I mean, they're starting to figure, they're, they're healthier now. They're starting to figure out who they are. Do you think they've turned a corner? I loved them when I had them last Monday at Notre Dame, and here's why. They played through Grayson Allen and Luke Kennard, and then Tatum played off of them and has still had a monster game. I, I just think... If I'm North Carolina in that game, I hope Tatum makes his first three and hangs out there. Because when he screen steps in off of Kennard or off of Grayson Allen, he is deaf. What so about? Yes, I do. I think. What about Oregon UCLA? What's your what's well, your first thought on that? My game? first thought is I haven't seen anybody play better in stretches than Oregon. Obviously, at the beginning of the year they struggled, but doing a UCLA game in person when they just dismantled Michigan. I, I love their team. I mean, T.J. Leaf, tremendous low ball is the guy that everybody talks about. Ellis with a putback. That's a bad possession. First time all game, Michigan allowed a penetration, and they fouled, and then they didn't get a rebound both off the free throw and the offensive. So I'm telling you, you, you got to play 40 minutes here if you're Michigan. And the foul was on D.J. Wilson, his third, so he's gone to the bench. Duncan Robinson to back in. Walton in the first half, 12 points, 7 assists, no turnovers. Almost got charged with a turnover right there. Michigan hangs on to possession. It's the shot up on the rim, but Bridges now with a rebound. Bridges certainly had his moments in the first half. Didn't have enough help. Short on the three. Ball's on the deck. Belongs to the Wolverines and a foul going against Ellis. Well, if you're going to come back in a game, then there is no miss. You know, you get an open look, you just have to knock that out, and you want to get this to 20, and I'll start putting a little pressure on. But it is make everything. If you're Michigan State, and you got the right guy shooting. Walton again using the high ball screen from Wagner. Pulls up for another jumper. He says he got hit on the arm. you got to believe he's telling the truth because yeah, it was three feet short. <laughs> I mean, he's been on fire. Yeah. Here they come in transition, but behind the play, we have a push going against Abdur Rahman. Well, they've been letting physical play go. I mean, they have been letting it on the ball. Tum Tum Nairn's been all over Walton and Walton all over him. Michigan came up with a loose ball, was ready to get down the floor, and let's look here underneath the bucket. That's a good call. A little hip check. Yeah. And definitely oh, got geez. hit. Yeah. Uh, good call here. Really good call. I happen to be watching Bridges. He shoved off of Zach Irvin. Number two on Miles Bridges. You're going to see this pretty clear, right? There, you just can't do that. That's too easy. Walton, as you mentioned, averaging better than 23 points per game over his last three. Great rebounding guard, dishing the ball extremely well. And you know, the half they had, and still, Zach Irvin isn't going. You're exactly right. You know, yep. and, uh, all these other guys. Yeah. You, look, you look at halftime, and you've got Wagner with 13, Walton with 12, Rachman, Abdul Rachman with 10. And Urban is one for three, three points in the game. Three of the 59 points that Michigan has. And John Beeline said before the game, it's gotten a little bit mental for him. He's, he's passing up some open shots, sometimes trying to overpass, set up his teammates a little bit too often. Ward banging with a Wagner. Help from Irvin. Nairn from the corner. Tum Tum Nairn. The shot is improved from the last couple of years. He doesn't take a ton of threes, but he's knocking them down at about 40%. Yeah, and that was a big one because Michigan had decided how they were going to play. They were going to double the post and leave Nairn alone. He makes them. That changes. That'll open things up for Ward. 
Little 6-0 run here for Michigan State. They need a lot more of that to make a game of this one. Wagner faces up on Ward. In and out. Good hustle by Abdur Rockman. Robinson. Dan, it's 27, but you feel like that was a big play. Because you said it. You, this place was dull. 6-0 run. 6-0 runs can become 15-0 runs. And Robinson doing what he does best, knocking down the outside shot. Ward banging inside, muscling it up and in. And we get a timeout of the floor. Ward will be at the free throw line when we come back. Worst defeat ever, 29. They're down 25 early in the second half. ESPN's exclusive college basketball, NBA, NHL, and more Sports Center at night next on ESPN. What are you saying to yourself in the last few minutes of the Super Bowl as that leads dwindling away for the Falcons? Uh, as soon as the coin flip happened, myself along with, I'm sure, millions of others said, okay, it's over. Right. <laughs> you, you just knew. There was no way Tom Brady wasn't going to go down and get a touchdown. 24-point game. Cassius Winston now into the point for Michigan State. Guarding Walton. They know each other very well. Walton says Winston's kind of like a little brother to me. They're both from Detroit. Play summer ball against one another. Winston a freshman. Walton a senior as Wagner's called for the travel. Well, the ball for Michigan is not moving nearly as well. And the energy in the building clearly yeah. has dissipated. First turnover in the last 16 minutes committed by the Wolverines. McQuaid can't get the shot off. Ellis playing despite being ill, missing shoot around earlier today. Didn't even come to the arena this morning. And is Zach Irvin doing the job from the post out to the top of the key on Bridges. McQuaid surrounded, and, but a foul is called against Michigan. It'll be Wagner. And John Beeline doesn't like that one bit. Well, Wagner came over, and you're going to see there is a bump. I mean, great defense by Michigan. Wagner's in good position here, and he just bumps kind of heads with McQuaid. And there's your makeup. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say it as soon as it happened. I was just wondering if you were going to have time to say it before it happened. I thought I beat you to it. <laughs> I figured I had to go quick with that one. <laughs> So we're all square. Wagner the handoff to Walton. Lots of time. Little Steve Nash out uh, <laughs> under the bucket. Bring it all the way back out. That's how you draw it up at a clinic right there. Yeah. Will shovel pass Wagner though the three rims out for him. Now bad possession again. There's been a number of bad possessions by Michigan. And will it be Wagner again? It will be another foul on Wagner. That's his third. Remember Wilson's already got three, so that's going to bring Mark Dinell into the game for Michigan. And you know Ward is a load. Ward runs right Main Street, just straight down the middle of the court, sees where the ball is, establishes position on ball side, and I mean just goes to work. Wide open underneath Bridges. A switch. Zach Irvin was on Bridges. He went and switched with Duncan Robinson onto McQuaid. Robinson didn't know. They didn't communicate. Left Bridges wide open. Down to 22. 11 3 run for the Spartans. And a lot of time left. Just six minutes into the second half. Good denial there by Winston to keep the ball away from Walton. Abdur Rockman draws the foul on the drive. You gotta talk, and when you're really attuned to things, you talk. First half, you're gonna see Duncan Robinson's on the block. Now, right here, there's a screen. You see this action right here. This is simply we pick him up and you stay there. Well, guess what? Nobody talks. Two guys go with the cutter, leaving the screener wide open. First half, that would not have happened. Michigan far more attuned, far more focused, didn't make any of those kind of mistakes. 
Good call. Non-shooting foul. Common foul is the call. So Michigan the ball out of bounds. Michigan State worked a lot on this play at shoot-around today because they felt they got hurt by out of bounds underneath against Michigan in the first matchup 10 days ago. And they were so aggressive, they fouled right there. They were going to steal the ball. They were trying to steal the inbounds. I saw that same thing. We were at shoot-around, and Michigan State was switching to increase pressure to take the ball on this inbound. Two-man game, Walton and Donnell. Open is Irvin. And the Spartans have a chance to cut into it a little bit more. McQuaid gets a good look. Good effort by Ellis, but the ball falls into the hands of Robinson. Oh, again, you had two open looks. One by McQuaid there, and earlier you had Ellis with an open look. Too easy on the baseline for Abdur Rockman. And Tom Izzo is going to get Ellis out. Ellis sick earlier in the day was sick defensively right there Harris will be coming in now does Ellis change his mind though as he makes a three yeah, I would I'd keep him in all right you made a defensive mistake you only gave up two down here Dan got you three got down three there. if everybody does it you win I don't think it's gonna work that way for I, coach is over he's coming there, yeah. <laughs> more dribbling a little less ball movement here in the second half by Michigan Walton thought Donnell got fouled on that layup attempt they play on Dan Walton was mad at Donnell for not just going to his left hand cost him an assist he try might it again he'll get one here maybe no he won't and it was deflected out of bounds though by Ellis so it'll stay with Michigan but you know that's, Derek Walton is doing what a senior should do. He's getting on his teammates. He's not accepting that Michigan's going to have a mediocre year, and he's playing harder than anybody on the court, and he's directing everything both ends. Well, they've used up a lot of their nine lives. If they're going to have a chance of playing meaningful postseason games, they're, they're run out of, running out of time. Got to win this one. Yeah. Got to get some road wins and... They have to get a couple more big wins, maybe against the likes of Wisconsin and Purdue at home later on this season. Another foul on Michigan State as we check in again with Molly. Well, Dan, you were talking about Derek Walton's intensity. He told his teammates before the game, you need to play above Michigan State's intensity. Channel your anger from this up-and-down season into aggression, and he's definitely been the emotional leader for the team through this tough stretch. He's hoping to bring them out of it, and he's doing his part tonight, Dan. No question about it, Molly. And he should. You know, you should not just accept mediocrity. You shouldn't leave college the same way you entered college. And Derek Walton's been a good player, but Derek Walton needs to be outside himself these last couple of weeks. And he has been the last few games, but you can't ever stop. You can't stop in this game. Abdul Rockman quietly having a terrific night as well. well. That's big for Michigan State, or excuse me, for Michigan, because he's been really non-existent of late. Harris can get going in a hurry sometime, but he's going to get going with an offensive foul right here. That's a good call. And that was Abdul Rockman. Abdul Rockman showed his hands, Dan, and he moved his feet. And if you show your hands and move your feet and you're quick enough, you're going to get this. Watch. He shows his hands. He's moving his feet. And right there is a push right in front of the official. So Harris out. Joshua Langford back in. And Tom Izzo right now is kind of a revolving door of who am I least unhappy with? Because <laughs> he's angry at so many of his players. He... He's trying to find five that he can tolerate being in the game right now. He doesn't like his coaches. He don't like the equipment manager. This is when, as an assistant coach, you just try to be invisible. Yeah. <laughs> Xavier Simpson had some nice moments in the first half. Needs some help. Finds out Dua Rockman. Shot clock at three. Good cut and finished by Robinson. Man, pretty. As soon as the ball was driven towards Robinson, the def defender, uh, Bridges, looked at the ball and Robinson back cut. There's a dunk. Whoa! <laughs> Only for that guy. 
Nobody else in this building finishes that play. Hey, oh. man, did you hear the crowd? They're like, whoa. Yeah. They would have given him a standing ovation yeah. if they wouldn't have embarrassed him. When the ball's in the air, did you think he was going to finish no. it? No, no. <laughs> no, not at all. That was impressive. Abdur Rockman around and out of rebound bridges. Misses the three. Well, they've had chances. Yep. It was his biggest 30. They got it down to 20, 22, to 23 now. As we move near the midway point of the second half here in Ann Arbor. That's a good move. Coach Bielan just put two hands up. He wants offense ran. Walton the kick. Robinson the three. Another long, long stretch without a whistle, which will come to an end. Going to be another offensive foul. This one on Cassius Winston. On Michigan State, let's talk Northwestern a little bit. Where are they at right now? Well, they've got to go to Indiana. They've got Maryland. They've got to go back to Illinois. They have Purdue, Wisconsin. Next game is at Wisconsin on Sunday. This is a little dicey. That's a game you can't you can't lose if you're if you're Northwestern. You try and make tournament for the first time. Now you go to Wisconsin. Some Tom Nairn, blazing speed up the court. Ellis and a block is called on Simpson. Let's go to Molly. Well, Dan, Michigan State assistant coach Dane Fife is happy that his team has done a good job getting back, but they're making some fundamental mistakes that he's really unhappy about. They gave up an offensive rebound for a three. He said that's just fundamental basketball. you got to grab it with two hands. And uh, he's happy that they've gotten some open looks. Their shots just aren't falling. So some improvements. They're just trying to stay positive over there. He even joked, said, you got any play calls for us, Molly? <laughs> Some improvements. They got it down to 22. They still got 10.08 to play with. Wagner and Wilson, each with three fouls, both back into the game for Michigan. A young Michigan State team, four freshmen, all in the rotation. No program in America gets more minutes from its bench, too, than Michigan State. They've had injuries. They're young. It's not a typical Tom Izzo kind of team. No, it, it has felt discombobulated from the get-go with Gavin Schilling going out, Carter going out. Their inside play was, you know, basically that little dirt right there. It was really decimated. And, he, you know, the point guard situation, whether it's Naren or Cassius Winston, Ellis has played some. That's a tough catch for Ward. Working hard, had it rejected, got it back. And it wouldn't stay down. Boy, you love the effort. Everything but the finish for Ward. And that's what Dane Five was just talking about. You know, here's the two guys that are out, and both of them would be big-time contributors. But Dane Five was talking, hey, we're getting good looks. But when you're trying to come back, as I said earlier, there, there's no, hey, good look. you got to make, period. Michigan shot 75% in the first half. They're at 33% here in the second half, and that'll go down a little bit further after the miss by Irvin. And the ball's getting stuck for Michigan. Walton. Walton out ahead of the pack to lay it in. Walton made the play, got in help side, and just kept rolling. I'm telling you, if you play hard, just play hard and play to win, great things happen for you in basketball. And Derek Walton, that's what he has done. This is the fourth game in a row. Michigan coming in on a two-game losing streak at Michigan State, home to Ohio State. But up 24 here in this rivalry game. Ward, good position inside. Again, can't finish. Tom Izzo wanted a foul. He felt like Wilson got over there late, and he did, but there wasn't a ton of contact. That's what I was talking about earlier, Dan. When you make your best jump, you play through that. He just kind of, Ward, just kind of tippy-toed. He just kind of fell into it, and you roll it off the front of the rim. Shot clock running down. Simpson the drive. And the finish. Oh, and it's rolling. It's rolling. He took it in and did a little back step. 
He pushed off his front foot. That's a heck of a move by Simpson to clear him some space. Going inside to Ward again, and this time he'll get the roll. Dan, that's the first time that Michigan, and this time it was Wagner, didn't battle the post. I was getting ready to say, this is the best post defense I've seen by Michigan forever, maybe ever. They battled, they fronted, they doubled. That time, Wagner let down his guard, and Ward made him pay. Let's see what the response is by Wagner at the other end. It's a travel. Did shuffle his feet before he put the ball on the deck. 7-17 to go. Still a comfy lead for the Wolverines. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Century. It's be their best game. And it's not just these two teams, it's everybody. No, I mean, teams will win, and all of a sudden, like in Indiana, was doing pretty good. They beat Michigan State, came to Michigan, lost by 30. Yep. You know, we think Maryland's a good team. They're up 12 against Purdue. Purdue comes back and wins. Maryland goes tonight and can't beat Penn State, who had been reeling. Lost to Rutgers at home. So this league is, is a lot of fun, and you just don't know. I think the thing you know the best in this league is Kyle Arns has checked in for the first time. You know who just keeps rolling along? Wisconsin. They just keep rolling along. Dan, they've been to, they've been to Purdue. They've been to Indiana when Indiana was at full strength. They've been to Minnesota. They don't have to go to Maryland. I don't think they're going to lose another game. And they're what nine and one in the league, yeah. right? I don't. I mean, we yeah. talk about all these teams losing. I, I don't see them losing. Joshua Langford back in for Michigan State. Winston will sit. No, Ellis is going to sit. Winston just got called to the uh, the principal's office to talk to the coach, but he's going to stay in the game. You had the line of the night. Trying to figure out who he leaked. What did you say? Who he dislikes the least. <laughs> it's so true. I don't know if he'll find it funny, though, so let's not overplay that. Because <laughs> like you said, he's angry at everybody right now. We don't want to be on that list. No, I like coaches. Yeah. I've, oh, I've known oh, him He's since, the best. Yeah. yeah. I was a player, I've known Coach Izzo, but I don't want to know Coach Izzo tonight. No. We'll see them again a week from tonight, right? We'll be in East Lansing, Michigan State, hosting Ohio State on the next Super Tuesday. Simpson's had some good minutes tonight. He'll sit up to a Rockman back in. It's the best game Xavier Simpson has played in, in a uniform, with Michigan uniform. He has been really aggressive again on both ends. He's just playing to win. He's not worried about himself. And I think Derek Walden has influenced that. Winston off the back of the iron. Good rebound by Arns. Matt Van Dyke is into the game for Michigan State as well. A former walk-on, undersized big man. But again, with the injuries to Carter and Schilling. And Deontay Davis turning pro. They are thin, thin, thin in the front court. It's a, as small a Michigan State team as we've seen in many, many years. Shot clock down to five. Winston the force and the hit for three. Well, Winston was really patient because he wanted to go against Wagner. And then they switched and he had D.J. Wilson on him and he wanted to go against him. Didn't have it and finally got the ball back, lifted up, knocked it in. I think Will's, uh, excuse me, I think Winston's really good. Like, I think he's going to be one of those guys that averages about nine assists, 16 points. I think he's going to be an All-American before he's done at Michigan State. Wagner. Comes down to Arms. Winston inside the arc, a little bit strong, and the loose ball rebound comes down to Wagner. Wagner's good is really good. Yeah. yeah. Inside, outside, working hard at both ends. He is versatile. Yeah. You saw him go behind his back. He does that. That's his move. He can shoot it from deep. Needs to get a lot stronger. Needs to be more consistent. Moving without the ball. Nice feed from Walton. He was going to go set a ball screen and just slipped it. And Van Dyke anticipated the ball screen. That's third straight cut to the basket that Michigan has gotten against a Michigan State team that did come to play. Wagner with a game high 19, 25 point advantage Wolverines. Van Dyke no, Van Dyke yes on the follow and a timeout. We'll keep it here with 4.45 to go and Michigan with a 23 point advantage.
Well, what a doubleheader we have coming your way Thursday night. A Sonic blockbuster there. Both Sonic blockbusters, North Carolina and Duke. What most feel is the best rivalry in college basketball. And then out west for Oregon and UCLA in a rematch of a great game earlier this year. Won by the Bruins. Well, this is the difference in this game. The points off turnovers, and again, it started early. And this is the end of different possessions where you just get it down the court. Here you get a steal, and away you go. Mo Wagner finishes with a heck of a pass. And again, Tom Izzo's team just has not handled the basketball, and I don't think that's all Tom Izzo's team. Michigan has come out with an activity of their hands, a movement of their feet, and aggressiveness that you just haven't seen out of Michigan for most of this year, most of the last three years. I mean, 28 points off 18 turnovers. Almost impossible to win a game when you have those kind of numbers going against you. And it was it was early and often tonight for Michigan State, turning the ball over to Michigan. Walton using some clock and then knocking down a three. Hey, he was under a little pressure right there, too. The defense was into him. Look at him. He's down in a stance. He's clapping. I mean, just just playing to win. How do you like 17 points, 8 assists, and no turnovers? Not a bad night. No, that's not bad. Yeah. That'll get you a scholarship. <laughs> Different era. That'll get you a car. <laughs> <laughs> Nairn. And Wagner, another rebound. Wagner... And Walton, the dynamic duo here tonight. Wagner now 19 points and six boards. Now you just don't know. College basketball, Dan, every night oh. delivers. You got a four overtime game going on in the SEC. I mean, it's just great. How long's the bus ride from Ann Arbor back to <laughs> Lansing? 72 hours. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's about what it's going to feel like oh, tonight, gosh. don't you think? Well, they'll be back, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them go on a run. But this, sometimes it just happens. It doesn't matter if you're in the Hall of Fame. doesn't matter if you're a rookie coach. These nights happen to you in coaching. A big run. They were up 26 at the half. They're up 26 now. They've made 10 of their 23, shooting 60% of the night. They'll be the first team all season to shoot 50% or better against Michigan State. That's pretty amazing, really, because this isn't a great Michigan State team. But Michigan came out and just knocked everything in. And, and you know what? Michigan didn't play great defense. Michigan State didn't play great defense. You know, they had some great looks, but that happens when you're just far more aggressive. Wilson couldn't handle the pass, then did a chin up on the rim for good measure, and here come the Spartans. Langford hardly heard from tonight for Michigan State, but he's not he's not alone in that category. Ward with patience and the finish. Yeah, Mo Wagner just got a little tired right there. Ward's come to play a little bit. Here. Yeah. Tell you, it is miserable, and I mean miserable when you lose like this. You're getting on the bus, you know, there was a day where the coach might not let you eat, not let you have pizza, might let not let you have a cell phone, might just yell at you the whole bus ride home. That that day's kind of passed because somebody will videotape it. Yeah, but they could have one of those practices where there are no basketballs out there tomorrow. You know what? Shoulder pads, yeah. we've seen coaches will do that. Yeah. They're going to try to bounce back on Saturday. They're home to Iowa. Then we mentioned we'll be in East Lansing a week from tonight. Super Tuesday home to Ohio State. They've still got to go to Purdue. They've still got to go to Maryland. They still host Wisconsin. And Michigan State by no means is home and cooled out in terms of making the NCAA tournament. Third longest active streak in the country. Kansas is at 27. That'll obviously continue. Duke is at 21. That'll continue as Wagner gets a big ovation, and deservedly so. Michigan State's been to the tournament 19 years in a row. Still got to get some W's to get it to 20. There's no doubt. And they have opportunity to get good W's, and certainly the Big Ten tournament. But, you know, and, and this doesn't put Michigan in great shape. I mean, it puts them in a decent, better than they were this morning, but they got a lot of work to do as well. 
So Wagner and Walton, the two best players in the game tonight, both lead to big ovations with two minutes to go. 20 points and 8 assists for Walton tonight. And another Spartans turnover. Bridges looks like a freshman right here. He's telling Tum Tum there, and you got to catch that. Who's the who's the best catcher in baseball? Buster Posey? He couldn't have caught that. <laughs> Julio yeah. Jones couldn't have caught that. And the freshman's <laughs> looking at Tum Tum like, hey man, two hands. Like, okay. John Teske back into the game. For Michigan, Ibby Watson has checked in as well, 6'5 freshman. Student section enjoying this one here in Ann Arbor. And maybe from one of the lowest points of the season, how poorly they played against Ohio State last week, to the high point of the season in back-to-back -back games. Go figure. That's the world of college basketball, certainly the world of college basketball in the Big Ten. Yep. Season high 16 for Abdur Rahman. Teske comes up with a loose ball. John Beeline wants to get one more whistle, wants to get some of his walk ons into the game. He'll have that opportunity right here. You know these guys. Your son's on the team. You want to give these guys a little love? Yeah, I'm going to give Sean Lonegan that kid right there. That kid is a hard-working kid. He makes everybody better. And came to Michigan because Spike Albrecht, there's my son. Spike Albrecht was playing with him in a, in a summer place called the Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Lonegan was going to go to IU. Spike told the coaches, hey man, this kid can really play. Coach Beeline invited him as a walk-on. He had a scholarship last year. Great kid. Fishers, Indiana. Another big ovation for Walton. He joined a pretty exclusive club tonight. 1,000 points, 400 rebounds, 400 assists, and he's on the verge of 500 rebounds, which will put him in even more exclusive company. He is, as we said, going out in style and having some fun. It hasn't been all like this for Derek Walton over the last four years, but right now it is. Point lead for Michigan on their way to their 15th win of the season. This will be the 10th loss of the year for Michigan State, and they'll drop to six and five in league play. But when you've had a good night and you hear that fight song here, it just kind of makes you want to dance. Pretty good. <laughs> That's what they're I'll dance with you, big boy. <laughs> I don't mean me. I mean oh. guys who can dance. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought maybe we were going to put on a little 80s. I'll do a little break dancing <laughs> if we need to. I'll spin up my head. Not what America needs. <laughs> Lonergan to inbound. Hey, I'm telling you, if I'm a walk-on, I'm shooting. Absolutely. I mean, Hibbert's really good shooter. There you go, get fouled. <laughs> Almost. And the shot clock was running down, so he had every right to take that shot. Now Hibbert's a foul at the other end. So what's next for the Wolverines after this big win? At Indiana on the weekend. And five of their last seven, as we mentioned, are on the road. The two home games against Wisconsin and Purdue. You want a chance to get signature right. wins, you got a chance. That's right. And that's how you have to look at it. Again, when the committee gets together and decides on teams, one of the things they look at is road wins. Michigan, zero true road wins. They got to get one. But I'm telling you right now, John Beeline. He is going to enjoy this tonight. Five straight losses to your rival makes you throw up all day. You know what he was just as happy about before the game? His son, Patrick, who you yes. remember, coaches at D2 Lemoyne, where John coached back in the day. And about an hour before the game, John was following along a little bit as he could. And at that point, they were up 15 in the first half. Lemoyne was, I don't know how it finished. We sat down to work here, but... You know, you're a, you're you know a proud dad. He's a proud dad. You know what else he was happy about? Huh. That his Cardinals stole Derek Fowler. De Dexter, Dexter Fowler, Fowler you're from right. the Cubs. I right. love Dexter Fowler. Yeah. 
love that guy. As much as you love the Cubs, he might love the Cardinals a little bit more. No chance. Yeah. I, we're on even footing. <laughs> you but, guys go at it? You guys talk oh, about I it text all the time? Him, yeah. I could yeah. not text him more. I never got a response as the Cubs were rolling. He was a bitter man. You know what the season opener on Sunday Night Baseball this Cubs, year? Cardinals. Cubs and Cardinals. You doing it? Yeah. I'm sitting next to you. I'm just going <laughs> to hang around. Or I want to be the Parab guy. All right. In the dugout. All right. Holds that thing that catches all the... Former walk-on right here. I know. I'm sorry. Former manager right yes, here. Yes, Fred Wright Jones. Yes, great kid. He just worked. He worked hard as heck as a manager. Would shoot around after practice. They needed some bodies in practice. So Coach Beeline put him in uniform. Let him play the end of the year last year. Kudos to Bart Fox and the guys in the truck. Lemoyne beat Pace 74 to 40. Well, nothing sure. gets by yeah. legendary Bart Fox and the great Scott Johnson. All in all, it was a great night for the Beelines. And a great night for the Wolverines. A win they needed, and they got it. And boy, did they ever get it up. They win by 29 over Michigan State. Make a statement. Now can they build on it and put together a better-looking postseason resume. The final here in Ann Arbor. Derek Walton Jr., Mo Wagner, and the rest of the Wolverines all over Michigan State to the tune of 86 to 57. For Dan Dockage, Molly McGrath, and our outstanding crew, I'm Dan Schulman saying so long from Ann Arbor. Sports Center starts now.